nothing works there. If you go there with your cell phone, the cell phone stops. If you go with a radio, it stops. If you go there with a compass, the needle just keeps spinning. You feel a strange tingling when you're there. They call it Mexico's Bermuda Triangle. It's located practically on the same 28th and 26th parallel. The evidence seems to be indicating that the zone of silence is some powerful energy vortex area that's literally sucking meteorites and other space debris right into this small area of northern Mexico. There have been a number of strange going-ons on the planet we call home, and usually we can rely on science to explain this phenomenon. At times, even the scientists are left baffled and can provide no suitable justification. One of these similar phenomena is the mysterious zone of silence. This area is northern Mexico's Chihuahua Desert is steeped in some fascinating myths and urban legends. It is claimed that radio signals do not work there, compasses stop working, and strange fireballs hover in the sky. Though most popular sources have refuted these claims, it has not stopped rumors from spreading. So what's the truth behind the silent zone? And why is it called the Mexican version of the Bermuda Triangle? Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button. Subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. La Zona del Silencio, or the Zone of Silence, is a patch of desert near the Bolson de Mapimi in Mexico, in a place known as Trinio Vertex, frequently compared to as the Bermuda Triangle. Both are located between parallels 26 and 28 and have similar legends. The legends say radio waves cannot be transmitted in certain areas and the silent zone due to local magnetic fields, aliens, and earth energy, among other explanations. The story of how these stories came to be is much stranger and more interesting than the paranormal legends would suggest. The region was remained all but undiscovered by the outside world. There are no fancy hotels in the zone, no beaches or pools, no life except for the most hardy of insects, reptiles, and small mammals that suffer its tormenting weather. This 31-mile stretch of land got its name, the Zone of Silence, back in 1966 when the oil company Pemex explored the area. The leader of the expedition, Augusto Harriet de la Pana, became extremely frustrated as he continuously failed to get a proper radio signal. The area causes all radio signals to crash and the compass needle goes crazy. Even though the cause of the peculiar behavior is still unknown, rumors of celestial activity and UFO sightings have been popular for a long time. Several large meteorites landed in the area in the 20th century, where one ranch was struck twice. The Zone of Silence has made headlines on July 11, 1970. The United States Air Force launched an Athena V-123D test rocket, carrying two containers of a radioactive element called Cobalt-57 from Utah's Green River Launch Complex. Though its intended target was New Mexico's White Sands Missile Range, the rocket lost control and accidentally entered into the Mexican airspace. Soon after, it crash-landed in the Durango Desert in the area now known as the Zone of Silence. Right away, a team of covert experts arrived at the scene to find and retrieve the crashed rocket, which they were only able to locate after conducting over three weeks of exhaustive aerial searches. A room was then built to transport the wreckage along with some contaminated topsoil. Though the entire operation was fairly hush-hush, the U.S. government hired a few locals to guard the crash site. The secrecy around the incident had already sparked interest, and the local guards had fueled the stories to garner some attention. Rumors kept spreading about the strange happenings in the area, and potential hotel builders and landowners saw it as an opportunity to boost the economy. A few scientists had supposedly visited the area and confirmed the phenomena, but documents related to the research are hard to find. Among the many myths, the most popular ones are that radios and compasses do not work in the zone, and UFO sightings are fairly common. Since the rocket crash incident of 1970, people have reported magnetic anomalies and UFO sightings all around the area. It is said that radios do not work inside the zone, compasses become useless, and people wearing light silver suits can be seen. However, verifying these claims is not easy or always possible because the zone supposedly moves around. Naturally, visitors to the area have often seen their radios and compasses working fine. The Mexican government has since constructed a research complex in the zone, a place the scientists assigned there called the biosphere. The primary purpose of the research facility is to study the plant and animal life of the unusual region. But rumors have it that a lot more research is going on there than meets the eye. 
if there were any eyes in the remote part of the world to see it. It turns out there may be some natural anomaly associated with the region. High levels of magnetite have been discovered there, and scientists have also found that the area is a hotbed for meteorite activity, raising speculation that there may be some unusual magnetic properties associated with the minerals in the chalky soil. Researchers have been trying to determine whether magnetic ore is naturally occurring or is the product of contamination from thousands of millions of years of meteorite bombardment, and if the high magnetic properties are a result of natural causes. Could this be the reason that so many iron-rich objects from space find their way to this remote spot on Earth? Theorists are quick to point out that the zone is geographically located just north of the Tropic of Cancer and shares the same latitude south of the 30th parallel as the Bermuda Triangle. A fact scientists point out is probably a simple coincidence. In fact, scientists at the Mexican Research Center have dubbed the region the Mas de Tetz, or the Sea of Thetis, because of one time, millions of years ago, the area lay at the bottom of an ocean. In defense of the theorists, there have been a number of unusual tales that have come from the zone. Strange lights, floating orbs, burning bushes, flying saucers, and alien encounters have all been reported with a degree of abundance considering the sparse population of the region. Ranchers of the area report that night sky is often filled with mysterious lights, and they have reported floating aircraft that allegedly land vertically in the desert, often causing brush to ignite and catch fire. And there have been reports of encounters with strange humanoid creatures. One ranch family claims they are regularly visited by a trio of blonde, long-haired humanoids two males and a female that speak perfect Spanish. As the story goes, the visitors only ask for water, never for food or other provision. And when asked once by the rancher where they come from, they reportedly answered, from above. Then there's the story of the visiting researcher at the biosphere who became lost in the desert. He reports he was directed back to the research center by a similar trio of blonde, strange looking people. Another story has it that a TV news investigation crew was aided by strange beings in the desert after being stuck in the road after an unusual cloudburst. These beings reportedly wore long raincoats and ball caps, something admittedly you don't often see in the desert wilderness. How much about the unusual region in northern Mexico is true and how much is the product of human imagination? How much fact and how much fiction? No one can say for sure. But there is little question that there does exist some natural phenomena that appears to evade a logical explanation. What's the cause and effect may be, science, miracle, or magic, remains to be seen. But isolationists and serious researchers of the unusual will find the region of great interest if you're in the mood for a dirty day in the desert. Just don't plan on watching any TV in Sabellos. There aren't any. Unfortunately, these new age and paranormal enthusiasts, known locally as Zaneros or Silencios, are now having an adverse effect on the desert area that contains the Silent Zone. By collecting and keeping both natural and historical artifacts they find in the desert, they are depleting the area of finite natural and historical resources. They have also caused some irritation to the Mapimi Biosphere Reserve, an ecological research station which is concerned about being associated with either the Silent Zone or the Zaneros. 